Okay, folks, welcome to Excel. We are doing mid-level exercise one, rentals. I've got my sheet open, instructions in front of me. So I'm going to move straight into step two. So we want to make our title look nice. And just like Word, we can use styles. So I'm going, so I need to apply the heading one cell style to A1 to G1. So A1 to G1 is this big cell here that's merged across the top. And cell styles is over here in the home tab. And I need heading one. So lots of options here. And I see heading one here. So that's it for step two. Step three, we want to apply a similar complementary style to the date. Uh, so we're going to, we've got the date here. Uh, so A2 to G2, we're applying it to. And we need to apply the 20% accent, accent one cell style. So let's find that. So 20% accent one right there. Done step three. Step four. Um, we have to merge and center the off-peak rentals in range E4 to G4. So we're merging this title over these three columns because it applies to all three. So if you click on the cell you want to copy across and then drag across everything else that you want it to go on, and then hit the merge and center button here in the home group. And it'll be Merge now, it's just one cell over top of the three columns. We are now done step four. Step five. So we are going to uh, apply the blue fill color and white background to cell E4. So let's do that. So E4, so we're in row four. E4 is this, it's our new merged cell. So we are going to apply the blue fill color so that it's in the font area, you've got the bucket. So we want blue, which is there. And then our text color, so the A with the color bar underneath, we want white background one. So there it is. So now it looks similar to the other title there. We're now done step five. Step six. Center and wrap the headings on row five. So what it's saying is you can look here and you can see that things are cut off. And you can't read them all. So we want to center them first. So we'll hit the center alignment just like Word. And we want to wrap it so the cell text doesn't cut off. It stays in the cell and the cell gets bigger. So you hit the wrap text button here. And now all our titles are on two lines and everything fits. So now we're done step six. Step seven. Um, so we're going to do our first ever formula. So we need to calculate the peak rentals maximum revenue um, if all units are rented. So we're going to do that in cell D6. So maximum revenue would be the number of units that they can rent out multiplied by the rate per day. So in Excel, when you're making a formula, you type equals first, and you can see it filling out in the cell and also in the formula bar up here. You can type it in either spot. It'll work. So if we want to do that, we need the number of units. You can click on that cell, and you can see B6 is now populated, multiplied. So that's Shift-8 and then the rate per day. So I'll click on that, and when you're done, you can hit tab, or typically I hit enter, and now we have our maximum revenue. So that step seven is done. Step eight, um, we need to go to cell G6, so that's over here in this discount rate area, and it says enter a formula that calculates the discount rate for the off-peak rental price per day. So how much are you saving um, based on peak versus off-peak? So we are told the formula here, so it's equals to get our formula started, one minus, and then we're gonna use parentheses, and we need to do off-peak rentals daily rate, okay, so that's this one, off-peak rentals daily rate, divided by, 
so the slash, that's where your question mark is, uh, peak rentals daily rate. Okay, so that's that. Close our parentheses and hit enter. Well, that does not look right. One minus off peak rentals divided by peak rentals daily rate. Ah, that's because I referenced the wrong cell. There you go. So you can click and drag your references around. I had it on maximum revenue, but you want it on the per day. That's why it didn't work. That's better. Okay, so we're done step eight. Step nine is we need our formula to fill up these cells as well. And instead of having to type it every time, like you had to do in the word tables, you click on the cell and you can see a little square in the bottom right corner. If you pulled your mouse over it, your cursor changes and you can click and drag and your formula will fill down. And we need to do that on both. So we can do that here too. Done. All right. So that's step nine. Step 10, format the range C6 to F8. So C6 starts here. F8 is this one here. So everything in between we need to do a counting number format. So we're still on the home tab. Here in the number areas, you're formatting. So you hit the down arrow and you'll find accounting. So there you go. Now we have dollar signs and two decimal places. Step 10 is done. Step 11, we're gonna change G6 to eight. So those are these ones. And we're gonna do a percent style with one uh, decimal place. So if we go back to the number format, find percentage. So it gives us two decimal places. So you can change that by clicking on these buttons here. So this one will increase decimal. This one will decrease. I will decrease. And now I have one decimal place. Um, next one. So step 12. Um, we are going to change our colors here. So we're going to um, apply blue accent one lighter 80% fill color to the range E5 G8. Okay, so I found uh, E5. Where's E5? E5 to G8. So that's all of those guns, those ones. So I need my fill color. Blue accent one is here, lighter 80% is this one. And there we go, looks nicer. So that's it for step 12. Step 13, so we're gonna do a custom color here and it is on the range C5 to D8, so that's this area. And if we want a custom color, we'll hit the down arrow next to the color, more colors in custom tab here and then we get to start typing in our color so we want red 242 green 220 blue 219 so i'm just going to type those in 242 220 and 219 and hit okay and now we have a nice red um, uh, fill color um, there's a note here in the instructions for mac users so in the colors dialog box, click the color sliders tab and then select RGB sliders. So that's how you would get to the custom color area. Step 14. So we're gonna start answering questions. So answer the first question below the worksheet data, apply yellow highlight color to the correct answers in either A cells A16, 17, or 18. Okay, so let's scroll down and see. So, which rental type generates the most maximum revenue for peak rental periods? Okay, so which rental type is the, during the peak the most maximum? Well, based on this list, I see that one bedroom suite. So I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna put a yellow highlight, so I'm just gonna fill that yellow. That's it for step 14. Step 15 is the next question. Which rental type generates the most maximum revenue for off-peak? All right, let's go up and look. Uh, maximum revenue during off-peak. Well, this one has an extra 30 cents in the studio apartment, so I'll choose that. Yellow highlight. And then step 16 is answer the third question and change the 
xx dot x percent to the correct percentage. Okay, so why is there a difference? The studio apartment is discounted only 22.6% for off-peak, whereas the one-bedroom suite is discounted by blank. So one-bedroom suite is discounted by one-bedroom suite 30.5%. Okay, so that's what we need to fill in. So we'll click on the cell. So if you click here, you can see that there's nothing there. It's because it's written in here and flows over top. So you have to click on the left cell, and then you can start editing inside. So it was 30.5%. Hit enter. So that's it for those steps. Now we're in step 17. We're going to do some formatting work. Uh, we're going to go into the page setup options. So to get to there, let's scroll back up to where our stuff is just so we know what we're looking at. So in the page layout, we'll go to the page setup dialog box. So hit the bottom corner there and we'll get lots of options. So we need to set landscape orientation, so we can do that there. We also want to center the data horizontally on the page and make sure it fits to one page. Well, I can see that we can fit it to one page here. So one page wide by one page tall, perfect. And then we need to horizontally center it. So there we can go to the margins tab, center on page, horizontally and it'll bump everything into the middle. So I'll hit OK and nothing will change what we're seeing but if we print it things will have changed. So that's it for step 17. Uh, the next thing we want to do is insert a footer. So to insert a footer here you can go back to the um, page layout, page setup dialog box and go to the header footer tab. And here's where we can mess around. So we're doing a footer. So I'm going to do custom footer. And it has left, center, right. So we can type in our stuff as we need. So we need to enter exploring series in the left section. In the center, we want a sheet name code. Well, if you look at all these buttons, they'll input automatic stuff. So sheet name code is this button here. And then we want a uh, file name code on the right. So file name code is this one. And when you have all that, you can hit OK and OK. So again, while we're looking at it in this view, you don't see anything. However, when you go to print it, you would. So if we go to File, Print, you can see our footer there at the bottom. You can see that it's kind of bumped our stuff sort of into the center, and it fits on one page exactly. Okay, so on to step 19. We're going to create a copy of the rental rates worksheet, place the new sheet to the right side of the original, and then rename it as formula. So if we want to copy our sheet, we right click on the, so this is where we keep all our sheets. So I can create new ones down there. So you can have more than one sheet inside your workbook. I'm going to get rid of them because that's not part of the exercise. But so if you right click on your sheet, move or copy we want to create a copy so you have to click that box and then you tell it where to put it so i want it to move to the end end is farther to the right so i'll click ok you'll see now i have rental rates and rental rates too i'm going to change that name to formulas so you can double click change the name or you can right click and hit rename whichever one you want and that's it for step 19. Step 20, uh, we want to display our formulas. So when we print this off, we can see all the formulas that are underneath the data. So to do that, we go to the data tab up at the top. And so make sure you're clicked on the formulas sheet first. And then we want to, oh, pardon me, we're going to the formulas tab and then clicking show formulas. Okay, so the formatting kind of looks a little goofy now, but you can see where we've done our calculations, all the formulas show up instead of the numbers that are calculated. Okay. Um, after doing that, we want to set our options so when we print stuff out, the grid lines and the headings also print. So if you do that, that is in page layout, and you've got checkboxes here. So we can hit grid lines, print, 
headings, print. All right, so that'll print like A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four um, for the headings, and then grid lines, you'll actually see the line. So if we go file, print, there you go. You've got your A, B, C. So if you're printing formulas, you want to have the headings there, or else it's hard to figure out which cells are being referenced throughout the sheet. Okay. So that's it for step 20. And then 21 is just save and close. So we are done Excel 1 mid-level exercise 1.